Hello and welcome, PML fans, to PMLDC. I am your host, Admin Joe, with my co-host, ugh, I was about to say Matt, uh, Dusty, Admin Dusty. Alright guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off by saying that uh, week 4 we had one forfeit, and that was the Minioars forfeiting to the Tauros because they couldn't get their DS in time for the battle. So the Minioars will be getting a negative 6 differential, and the Tauros will get a win plus a plus 3 differential, which will impact uh, some people's chances of playoffs as of right now. But um, to start off the division standings, for Kanto is Chartreets 2-2 two and two with 0 differential, PSG 2-2 two and two with plus 6 differential, uh, Tyroars 1-3 with a negative 12 differential, Polyrasps 2-2 two and two with a negative 3 differential, uh, New Zealand Kings with a 3-1 and one record with a plus 11 differential, Tauros with 3-1 and one with plus 4, and then Minioars are 1 and 3 with a negative 13 differential. So, the top three teams for that division uh, conference is uh, New Zealand Kings, Toros, and PSG due to differential. Then for the Lowland side, we have Rambles on 4 with negative 19. Blades 2 and 2 with negative 2. Rapidash are undefeated 4 and 0 with plus 13 differential. Uh, Knights are 1 and 3 with minus 2 differential. Tyranitars are 3 and 1 with plus 2. For Alligators, 3 and 1 with plus 9. And the Giraclones are 1 and 3 with negative 4 differential. So, top 3 teams there are the Rapidash, Tyranitars, and Gators. Bah, there we go. Now, to start with the first game <clears throat> of week 4. We have uh, the Chartreuse and Polyrats, and Dusty, I'll let you start with that one since this was my game. Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, Don Fan has a wide move pull that <clears throat> can throw you off if you ain't ready for it. Um, I think it's because of out of all the flying moves that Aerodactyl can actually learn, that's probably the hardest hitting one. So I think it's 65. Oh, I, 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 I believe it was 65, but uh, you might be right. But uh, I, I also think he could have went with Aerial Ace or something. A uh, sky drop would have probably been better for my team because I don't have anyone that's so heavy that it can't be lifted. But yeah, so maybe uh, next time he'll think about that set better. But uh, I do believe it was choice banded because he was kind of locked into that one move. Uh, and with the notes I have is I had pretty de I had pretty good prep, especially with that Espeon uh, hidden power. He I don't think he saw that coming. And and also he played very well until my mom I was able to get up that uh, swords dance and uh, just took everything out from there. Yes, so it's power doubles. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so his attack power doubles plus the plus two, so it's just like, ah. 
what can I do against this thing? But none of that. He did really well. He only lost 2 0. And uh, he did say he misplayed, but you know, misplays happen. Everyone misplays, so you never know what a game can come out looking like. And uh, next up, we actually have uh, Knights versus Grambles, which is your game. And you actually got the 6 0 on the Grambles. Uh, the notes I have here is a uh, nice swallow set, and you did great work with that slow bro. And for him, uh, he needs to play better by using setup on possible sweepers. Uh, I saw him come in with Mimikyu and a couple of other bonds, and he did not do anything with setup that he could, he should have done or could have done. Okay, so that's where uh, prep came in handy. Alright, well, we'll move on to uh, Gators versus Clones, which is a little bit closer game. Uh, it was a plus three differential in the Gators' favor. Uh, they did beat the Jirachi Clones. And what I had here is Ditto is just working amazing. He, he puts it in in the right situations every time. And he's putting on a clinic every week. <laughs> yeah, and for uh, the clones, I uh, I put uh, he just got outplayed. Every time he got a kill, Ditto did him in. Like Ditto just was the counter in that game, and it showed. And then. I was actually going to draft Ditto in the fifth round. It was on my board. Yeah, I've, I've been watching uh, some draft league battler, uh, G Gym Leader Geo. And uh, he always drafts a Ditto. And I was watching him actually put it to use. And I was like, hmm, I, I think I could do something with it. But nonetheless, it got picked up before I could get there. And then uh, the next game is Ty Wars versus PSG, which uh, Ty Wars won with the plus two differential, but PSG lost with a negative three due to the fact that whenever uh, one of Ty Wars' mons died to recoil, I believe. So it ain't, uh, what's it called? It didn't warrant PSG the kill. And uh, the notes I have here is um, Tower should have used Melodic to counter Pukumuku from the beginning because that whole stall T-Tar Pukumuku little 20 minute battle right there. It was just obnoxious to watch. And at the end of the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's the thing. Tyro should have realized how much damage a plus three did instead of wasting all that time to get to plus six to do hardly more. Could have just went to Milotic, toxic it, and it would have been done. And then he could have used Tyranitar later. Or even went into Milotic, toxic, came, went back into T-Tar, set up, and let it die to toxic. And uh, I put that um, PSG should have had Toxic on Pukamuku. Uh, it had Reflect, Counter, Recover, and I don't remember what other move it had, but it did not come in use at all whatsoever. So...
Uh, I believe it was Choice because he kept switching it out when he couldn't hit something with electric. Yeah, and that's what I put here too. Uh, he could have played better around Metagross if he would have used a fire move. Yeah, that would have probably sent uh, Tyroids into Milotic, but you should have a counter for everything for that at least. Knowing Milotic is gonna come, but uh, those are the thoughts on that game. Other than that, they both did very well. Nihiligo didn't do much in that game. He got taken out pretty early. Uh, I believe by the T-Tar. Or... No, it was the Metagross, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it actually did work in the actual Week 5 game that we're going to talk about in the next episode of PMLDC. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, Kings versus Blades. And the Kings won in a 4-0 victory over the Blades. And that Hell team was the reason for that. Uh, I just watched the game, and obviously, as I've been talking highly of the Kings lately, is that they just had a great strategy when they went in, played very well in the game to keep the differential. He actually took my advice from that week three and played around with the differential to keep that plus four instead of uh, going to plus three or possibly plus two. It did. It got four kills in that one game. <laughs> yeah, he put it to good work. Uh, and then for the blades, I put uh, he just got out prepped because uh, Lonely Sandslice pretty much hit everything on his team pretty well. And uh, he almost pulled it back at the end with Lycanroc, but he was just too far behind to actually make it work. He kept getting intimidate drops by that Incineroar and didn't do much. Alright, and then we'll move on to uh, the last game, the game of the week, the Battle of Titans, the undefeated Rapidash versus the undefeated Tyranitar. One had to go in well, both had to go in, and one came out a loser. One was going to go home with Victor, and the Victor was Rapidash. Obviously, as you can tell by our recap earlier, they are 4-0 and o with a plus 4 differential in that battle. Um, he just was able to stay a step ahead of Morgan that whole game. It's like he had Morgan's playbook, and he was just like, all right, I know what to do now. Yeah, that caught me off guard, too. I totally forgot that Vacuum Wave is actually priority. And, uh... Yeah, my thing for the T-Tars was he just couldn't get ahead. He just got outplayed, outswitched. That was the end of that right there. <laughs> all right and that's the recap and we also want to go real quick to our kill leaders for the draft league as of week four mega scissor still number one with 11 kills for the polyrafts number two is nihilego didn't get no kills this week but still at the top with 10 with psg and Infernape, of course, with eight kills on that undefeated Rapidash team, putting in work. Do you feel uh, the tables will turn on these titans of killing anytime soon? 
<laughs> yeah so as you can tell Kanto still has a little ways to go everyone's pretty much notched up there with uh, two 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 three one three one and just a couple just a couple topsy-turvy stuff happening in week five that we know of as of right now. But in the Lowland division, it's pretty much hearsay of who's going to go. But you never know. There's those few teams that can just come back out of nowhere and decide to show up late in the season. Well, you have a big chance of knocking him out of the playoffs or boosting him in. Yeah. Oh, that's a big time uh, playoff game right there. So <laughs> well, play him hard, play him good, and hopefully everyone here watches. So long, guys. That's our week four recap.